It was a discovery, an innovation, a creation, whatever term you use. There are very few in life in the medical field that have had immediate, reproducible, ongoing, unquestionable impact on saving lives on a continued, ongoing basis every day. The blood bank is one of those seminal discoveries. My uncle Bernard Fantas created the first blood bank at Cook County Hospital on March 15, 1937, in a one-room laboratory on the third floor. Dr. Richard Fantas, who says medicine is in his blood, was inspired to become a doctor because of the legacy of his great uncle Bernard. A young, brilliant doctor with a background in pharmacology, Bernard Fantas came to this country at the age of 17 and made his mark in the medical field as a therapeutic or internal medicine doctor. During his career, he taught, did research, edited important medical journals, and even developed the concept of candy coating medication for kids, something he was never credited with. He was soft-spoken, kind, took care of indigent patients, never really cared about money. But as a doctor at Cook County in the 1930s, a large, busy hospital in Chicago with a wide variety of ailments, Fantas saw a huge need for blood storage and donations. There was an understanding of hemorrhage and shock from hemorrhage that came out of World War I. There was an understanding of work that had been done predominantly in Europe and in Russia about the ability for blood from cadavers, for instance, to perhaps uh, give some benefit uh, to individuals. But I think the likely biggest driver of Dr. Fantas' uh, development of the blood bank model was actually the sea of humanity that he was taking care of and seeing in the Cook County Hospital on a day-in and day-out basis. At that time, blood donation was on a case-by-case -case basis, not in steady supply. Patients would often be left waiting, and some could not hold on. Prior to the development of the blood bank, a person who needed blood, it was a reactive phenomenon. And so if a person came in and was hemorrhaging from a trauma or from childbirth, then there would be a call that would go out to family members and friends to come in and in the moment give blood. That didn't allow a lot of time for sophisticated cross-matching or analysis, and it was haphazard at, at best. While necessity is often the mother of invention, and with World War I still fresh in people's minds, and many patients in dire straits, Fantas's blood bank idea was born. When Dr. Fantas created the blood bank at Cook County Hospital in the 1930s, one of the things that he recognized was that, first of all, there were ways to anticipate when blood might be needed. Secondly, there had been development of technologies that allowed blood to be stored. So there was the notion that you could have blood and hold on to it for a few days from a donor, and it would still be viable and safe to then give it to another uh, patient. So initially, they, you know, they were thrown around the term blood preservation laboratory, which is what it truly was, but he didn't like the concept. He looked at the banking industry where people would make deposits, they would get a credit for it, and then they could make a withdrawal so the blood would be available when they needed it. And so Dr. Fantas's um, uh, really lightning bolt and uh, in, in the way that he revolutionized the field was the anticipation, calling ahead and allowing either the individual herself to donate blood that might be needed in a couple of weeks for a surgical procedure or family and friends to come in the day before or, or a few days before a procedure for an individual and donate blood. I'm the manager of a savings bank with branches all over the country, but we are by no means an ordinary savings bank. In fact, our vaults contain something much more valuable. They contain flasks of life-giving blood and plasma. Shortly after Fantas created the blood bank, the concept was taken nationally, then internationally. Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, by air. President Roosevelt has just announced. By the time World War II broke out, blood banks were being used extensively, saving countless lives. But in 1940, Dr. Fantas died, 
never realizing the significance of his contribution to the history of medicine. So the importance of the blood bank can't be underestimated. Some people have suggested had he lived longer, Dr. Fantas would have collected a Nobel Prize.